Hello Algebra 1 students, this is Mr. Wilsey, and for this video I'm going to need you to get out paper of some sort. It does not need to be grid paper, it can be line paper like what I'm using here. And I want you to title your notes, Algebra 1, Solving Systems of Equations. by substitution. That is going to be the topic of this video. I also want you to put the date, um, so whatever the date is that you're watching this video. The date that I'm making this video is January 3rd. Alright, now let's think back to the last video that we watched in which we solve systems of equations by graphing. This was the first example that we looked at in this video, in that video. We solve this system of equations by graphing them, okay? And the solution that we came up with was 2, comma, 4. So x is 2, and y was 4. So let's use the same exact system of equations, but let's try to solve it in a different way. So example number 1, I'm just going to copy down what that system of equations was. y equals x plus 2 was the first equation, and y equals 3x minus 2 was the second equation. And over here, let's just put this in a box, uh, the solution was x equals 2 and y equals 4. Now in this video I'm going to teach you another way to solve this system of equations by a method called substitution, and we're going to try to find the same exact answer. Alright, now let's think about what these two equations say. If y equals x plus 2, and this equation says that y also equals 3x minus 2, isn't it true that x plus 2 equals 3x minus 2, since they're both equal to the same thing, y? Yes, absolutely, that is true. And that is the idea of substitution, is that in one equation, you can substitute the y for what y is equal to, according to the other equation. So let's do that now. I am going to substitute x plus 2 for y in this second equation. So I'm going to circle x plus 2, I'm going to draw an arrow, and it points at the y. Now I'm going to label this arrow um, 1. Step one, okay? You're going to see a lot of arrows in these problems, and I'm going to try to make it easier for you to follow my train of thought by numbering all of the arrows, okay? So x plus 2 is going to go in for where y is here, and then I'm going to drop down this equation. I'm going to label the second arrow 2, and then I'm going to write the equation again, except instead of y, I am substituting x plus 2 for y. So now we have a brand new equation. x plus 2 equals 3x minus 2. And the y is gone. We just have x's. And this is the kind of equation that you learned how to solve at the very beginning of the school year. This is the kind of equation that we like. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move all of the x's over to the left hand side and I'm going to move all the numbers over to the right-hand side so that we will solve this brand new equation for x to get a value for x. So I'm going to bring the 3x over to the left side by subtracting 3x. x minus 3x is negative 2x plus 2 equals negative 2. I'm going to move that 2 over to the right-hand side of the equation. Notice that I cannot deal with the negative 2 quite yet. I will have to deal with that in the next step. So negative 2x equals negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And then finally, I can divide off the negative 2. So x equals negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So x equals positive 2. Fantastic. Now, I'm not done yet. Remember that when we solve a system of equations by any method, 
we need to find a number for x and a number for y. So now I'm going to take this x equals 2, and I'm going to substitute 2 for x in one of the original equations. It does not matter which one I choose. I'm just going to pick the second equation. So actually, I'm going to pick the first equation. Ta-da! So here's another arrow, and I'm going to label this arrow 3. And then I'm going to bring it back over here, label this arrow 4. So what I'm doing, I am taking this 2, I am sticking it in for x right here. So y equals 2 plus 2. So y equals 4. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if this arrow went over here to the second equation, you would have gotten the same exact thing. Okay, you would have gotten that y equals 4. So now we have solved the system of equations. x equals 2 and y equals 4. Or you could also write it as an ordered pair if you wish. I'm going to box that up and notice that that is exactly what we found by graphing the system of equations right here. All right, now let's take a look at a second example. And in fact, this example might look familiar to you again, just like the first one did. Because I want to look at example number two from the other video. So this system of equations right here. I want to solve this system by substitution now. So let me write out what that system is. y equals negative x minus 4. And 4x minus y equals negative 1. Now, over here in a little bank, remember that the solution we found to the system of equations by graphing was negative 1 comma negative 3. So x equals negative 1, y equals negative 3. Now, we're going to solve this system of equations by substitution, and we're going to try to replicate that answer. All right. Now, in this case, the first equation is already solved for y. It's already written in terms of y. It says y equals something. So that means it's going to be really easy to take all of this stuff, negative x minus 4, and substitute it into the second equation where we see y. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to stick it in for y. And I'm going to label that arrow number 1 because that's my first step. Then I'm going to drop down the second equation. 4x minus equals negative 1. All right. Now notice that I wrote the exact same equation that I have up here. I left a little bit more space where the y is, though. And in fact, I'm going to put parentheses where the y is because we're going to replace y with a pretty complicated expression here, negative x minus 4. So I'm going to put, I'm going to actually make it in red, I'm going to put negative x minus 4 right where we had the y. Now, these parentheses are very, very important, and in fact, Parentheses are going to be your best friend throughout this section. In this case, the parentheses tell us that we need to distribute that negative sign to the negative x and to the negative 4. So the next step of solving this equation for x now, just like in the last example, once I substituted, I had a brand new equation with just x in it and I solved that equation for x to get a value. We're going to do the same exact thing here. So the negative sign into the parentheses means that 4x negative times a negative x is positive x. Negative times a negative 4 is a positive 4. And this is equal to negative 1. All right. Now 4x plus x 
is equal to 5x, and then I have a plus 4 equal to negative 1, hanging out there. And then the next step is going to be to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. So 5x equals negative 5. And then finally, divide off the 5. So x equals negative 1. Fantastic. All right, we're done, right? No, of course not. Solving a system of equations by any method means that you have to find an x and a y. So now what we're going to do with this value that we found for x, we're going to substitute it into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one. In this case, I'm going to bring the negative 1, and I'm going to stick it into the first equation. Now, why do you think I stuck it into the first equation instead of the second equation? Because I could have done both. But I chose the first equation because the first equation is already solved for y. I'll automatically have y equals a number. So this was step two. And then I'm going to bring another arrow out here. Step three, y equals negative. I'm going to have parentheses where I had the x and then minus 4. The reason I have parentheses here is because I have a negative number that represents what x is, negative 1. Remember, wrap complicated things or wrap dangerous negatives inside of parentheses. Wrap them in straight jackets. All right, so y equals a negative times a negative 1, makes that a positive 1, minus 4, hanging out. So y equals 1 minus 4 is negative 3. All right. Now we are done. x equals negative 1, y equals negative 3. Or you could write it as an ordered pair, negative 1, comma, negative 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the solution to the system of equations which, you might not be surprised, is the same exact solution that we found by graphing. All right, so let's take a look at a brand new example. So we're going to take a look at a system of equations that you have not seen before. And we're going to try to solve it by this new method that we're learning, solving systems by substitution. So again, you're writing down all of this with me. Example number three. Now here's the new system of equations that we're going to be studying. 2y minus x equals 2, and 5y minus 4x equals 23. All right. Now, this system of equations looks a little bit more complicated than the ones that we already looked at. And the reason is because in example 1, both equations we're already solved for y, which is nice. In particular, this system of equations was very easy to solve by graphing, because it's easy to graph an equation that's solved for y, because it's in slope-intercept form. Okay, That's also easy to plug into your graphing calculator. Now, example number two, the first equation was already solved for y, so it was easy to take what y is equal to and substitute it into the second equation to get a brand new equation that we can solve for x. But in this new example, neither equation begins solved for y, or for that matter, begins solved for x. So that means that we're going to have to do a little bit extra work. We have to solve one of the equations for y, or we could solve one of the equations for x. It actually doesn't matter. But you're probably more used to solving an equation for y, so let's just go ahead and do, do that, okay? So I'm just going to pick one of these equations, and I'm going to solve it for y. I'm going to pick the first equation. I'm going to pick the first equation, and I'm going to solve that for y, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this equation over here. So step one, I'm just going to rewrite what the equation said, and then I'm going to, I'm going to also say, I'm going to write out what, what I'm doing. Solve for y. 
So I'm solving this equation for y. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move the x to the right side of the equation by adding x to both sides. So 2y is equal to 2 plus x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So y is equal to 2 divided by 2 is 1. And x divided by 2, we can just leave it as x divided by 2. Okay? All right, so y equals 1 plus x divided by 2. So now that we have this equation solved for y, I can substitute it into the second equation. So I'm going to circle this, and I'm going to bring it over here. Now this is really important. Notice that I substituted this into the other equation. If I substituted this back into the first equation, then if you try to solve that equation for x, you're going to get something like 3 equals 3, or 0 equals 0, or some true statement, but it doesn't have any x in it. x disappears. And that doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't tell you what x is, and it doesn't tell you what y is, which is your goal of solving the system of equations. So please, please, please make sure whenever you solve one equation for y, you put the result into the other equation. Okay? So substitute is the second step. So I'm going to bring this down. Step 3. And then, um, so after I substitute in for y, I'm, my goal with this new equation is going to be solve for x because the y will have disappeared. So now watch what I do. 5 times in parentheses. So this is where y was. And I'm going to keep everything else the same. Minus 4x equals 23. Now, the thing that I'm putting in for y is 1 plus x over 2. Okay? So that's not too bad. Now I have a brand new equation. Now, this is also very important. I've seen students sometimes do all of this correct, but then they have a y hanging out here. The y is gone. The y is gone. Okay, The y has been replaced with 1 plus x over 2 inside of parentheses. Now the reason for the parentheses is to indicate that I need to distribute the 5. Okay, The 5 is multiplying the 1 and the x over 2. So 5 times 1 is going to be 5. And then 5 times x over 2 is going to be 5x over 2 minus 4x equals 23. Okay, So now we're solving this equation for x. The first step was to multiply, um, was to distribute. Okay, So now I'm going to combine like terms. Let's see here. 5x over 2 minus 4x. You might look at that and not be entirely sure about what to do. But remember, all that we're doing here is... Oh, goodness. Ooh, I need to clear out my history. All this is is 5 over 2. So 5 divided by 2 minus 4, which is negative 3 over 2 negative 3 over 2 times that x because the x is in both places okay so nothing new there I promise 5 hanging out front and then equals to 23 alright so now I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides that's going to be the next step in solving this equation for x so negative 3 over 2 times x equals 23 minus 5 is 18. All right. Ooh, I love this equation, this equation that we wound up with. We're still not done yet. We have to solve this equation for x, which means we have to move the negative 3 over 2 to the other side of the equation. Do you remember how to do that? Do you remember how to solve an equation that looks like that when you have a fraction 
multiplying the thing you want to solve for. Thought bubble multiply by the reciprocal. Does that sound familiar? Whenever you have a fraction multiplying the thing you want to solve for, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that fraction. Now, the reciprocal of this fraction is negative 2 over 3. So I'm just flipping the fraction. Negative 2 over 3 it is multiplying both sides of the equation. Now, notice that the reciprocal that we are multiplying this by is still negative. I'm not talking about the opposite reciprocal, which m would be positive 2 over 3. The opposite reciprocal comes into play when you're talking about perpendicular lines, right? But when you're solving an equation that looks like this, you multiply by the reciprocal, which has the same sign as whatever that is. Because when it has the same sign, the two negatives will cancel each other out, the 2 on top will cancel out with the 2 on bottom. The 3 on bottom will cancel out with the 3 on top. Everything, all that mess cancels out, leaving you with x, which is exactly what you want. x is on the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have 18 times negative 2 over 3, which you can do in your calculator if you want. 18 times negative 2 over 3, negative 12. All right, x equals negative 12. Oh, finally, we are done. That was so much work just for one measly problem. No, we're not done. Of course we're not done. We have an x, but we need a y. Okay, so now we're going to take this number and stick it into one of the original equations. But actually, we don't even have to do that. We can take this equation, we can take this number, I mean, and stick it into any equation that we derived from one of the original equations. Like this equation here is the same exact thing as that equation, except this one is solved for y, which means if I take this negative 12, stick it in for x right here, the equation will tell me immediately what y, what y is. I don't have to do any extra work. So that's what I'm going to do. I like my life simple. So I'm going to bring this over here. So this is step four, and it's going to be substitute again. Does that surprise you? There's a lot of substituting involved in this method. So now y equals one plus negative 12 is substituting for the x, and then I'm going to divide this by two. So y equals uh, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So 1 plus a negative 6 is the same thing as 1 minus 6. So y equals 1 minus 6 is negative 5. All right, now we have a solution to this system of equations. x equals negative 12 and y equals negative 5. Written as an order pair is negative 12 comma ne negative 5. Either way you want to write them is fine. All right, so we are done with that. Now, you might be asking yourself, or you might be asking Mr. Wilson in your head, why in the world are you teaching me another way to solve systems of equations? I mean, I liked solving systems of equations by graphing. That was easy, especially when you showed me how to solve systems equations in the calculator by graphing. That's so easy. So why in the world are you showing me this new method where it literally takes me a whole stinking page in order to do one stinking problem? Well, the reason that I'm teaching you this new method of solving systems equations by substitution is not really because I want to teach you a new method to solve systems of equations. I really want to teach you, and I really want you to learn, how to substitute. That is the key skill that you're going to be getting out of this work. Substituting, okay? Being able to see that, oh, y equals x plus 2, so in any other equation, I can replace y 
with x plus 2. I can substitute x plus 2 for the y in any other equation. That is the key skill that you're getting out of this work. It's just embedded in this um, idea of solving systems of equations. Okay, So substituting is the key skill here. And you notice that we did that a lot. Okay, We substituted twice in this problem. Okay. Now, let's take a look at one last example. And this time we're going to go back to something a little bit more familiar. It is going to be a system of equations that you have already seen before. So example number four. Now, let's think back to the last video that we watched on solving systems of equations by graphing. Now, I want to try to solve this system of equations by substitution. Now, the first equation was y equals 2x plus 3. The second equation was y equals 2x minus 1. All right. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, this system of equation looks just like the first one we did. Both of the equations are solved for y. It'll make my life so much easier, right? So let's just breeze right through this. Let's solve this system of equations. All right, so I'm going to take the first one. I'm going to stick it in there. Okay, this is step one. Okay, good, good. So that means that 2x plus 3 equals 2x minus 1. All right, good, fantastic. So now I have a brand new equation, and I want to solve it for x. So I'm going to move the numbers over to the right side, starting with a 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. Good, good, all right. So 2x on the left equals 2x on the right minus 4. Okay, good. Now I'm going to bring the 2x over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 2x, and then I'm going to wait. There's a 2x on the left side, 2. So 2x minus 2x is 0 on the left side. 2x minus 2x is 0 on the right side, but then I have a negative 4 hanging out. Oh, that's interesting. 0 equals negative 4. Hmm. Fun fact. That's not true. Zero never was, nor never will be equal to negative 4. So what we have found is that when we try to solve this system of equations, we get a result that is not true, ever. This is an untrue statement. Zero is, in fact, not equal to negative 4. Now, we encountered equations like this at the very beginning of the school year. And whenever you get an untrue statement in the process of solving any equation, the proper thing to write down is that there is no solution. No number that you can stick in for x will ever make this equation true, which means that no number for x will ever make this system of equations true. So there's no solution to the system. Now, thinking back to the other video in which we solve the system of equations by graphing, remember that graphically, these two equations represented parallel lines. And we said that parallel lines never intersect, and the intersection point was supposed to mean the solution to the system of equations. So if the lines are parallel, they never intersect, which means there's no solution. Okay, so this matches exactly what we hopefully recall from the very beginning of the school year. Now there's a third case, okay? There's either one solution, no solutions, or an infinite number of solutions. Now I want you to think about what you will end up with in the process of solving an equation that will give you infinitely many solutions. Okay, And graphically, of course, the two equations will represent the same line. Okay, So I'm just going to leave that as an open question. When will you get an answer of infinitely many solutions when you are solving a system of equations by substitution? Okay? 
So that is the end of this video. And then Mr. Wilsey is going to have you do some in-class work in order to practice the skill of substitution.